So I got one of these Harbor Freight spot welders, pinch welders, and I only feel a little bit dirty. For $159, it's going to save me a lot of time working on the Jeep, but probably not going to use it enough to invest in a really good one. So I figured I would do a 20 minute video showing you that this works exactly the way it's supposed to. Actually, that sounds boring. Let's hack it instead. So the first thing I notice about this, having not actually used it yet, is it's pretty hefty. 27 pounds, 12.4 kilos, but it's also pretty well balanced, as long as you're holding it like that. But I do know that I'm going to want to be holding it vertically or sideways, and then it just becomes really awkward. Let's do something about that. The material's pretty thin here, so I'm going to use nuts on these screws rather than tap the holes. While I've got this on the mill, I want to address one of the other issues I see with this machine. The cord that comes with this thing is comically short. It's about six feet long, two meters-ish. The instruction manual says you can do a 30 foot long extension cord if it's 10 gauge. I just got 20 feet of 10 gauge wire and just going to replace it with that. But that means I need a bigger hole for a bigger gland on it. I was putting Loctite on some screws once, and it was sort of one of those fiddly operations where you need three hands, so while I was getting it lined up, I put the screw with the Loctite in my mouth to hold it. That's a mistake you only make once. I like that. Now that I look at it again, I probably should have put it down here, but I think that'll still be pretty good. Now I need something to replace that. I'm thinking sort of like a chainsaw handle almost. Probably use the same holes here, come up, around, and then attach back down there. Forging this is admittedly a little bit silly, but it's a good excuse to do some blacksmithing and serves as a reminder of how bad I am at it.
I didn't get this bend quite right because I forgot to account for the little kick out at the bottom of the handle. And now I can't fit it back into the forge. I also realized I should have done this part first. Not sure if the cold blue I have is still any good or not, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah, that's pretty good. I had to run to the hardware store for some stuff anyway. Picked up some button heads for these. Next up, these tongs are also comically short. They're not useless, but they're going to be a lot more useful if they're longer. You can buy longer tongs for these, but they cost basically what I paid for this thing anyway. And I've got this piece of copper, so what I'm going to do is make some extensions for it. Well, it turns out that's a piece of ground rod and not actually uh, copper. It's steel with copper plating on it. So I'll have to get some copper and save that project for another time. One other thing I want to do is swap out these nuts. These are for adjusting the downward pressure of it. But who wants to go find a wrench every time?
I know this thing fits. This one's hitting right on that corner there. My copper showed up here, so let's go ahead and just knock these extensions out. The existing tongs have a bend in it, so I can't chuck them in the lathe, so I'm going to face them off in the mill. I need to drill and tap this, but I do not have the Z clearance to make that happen here. So, time to get creative. So I've got this boring bar holder. It just happens to be the right size for this. Copper is a notoriously difficult material to machine and especially tap because it just kind of smushes around instead of cutting sometimes. So I'm using what's called a form tap or a roll tap rather than a cutting tap. It doesn't actually have any flutes, it just kind of smushes the threads into the hole rather than actually cutting the threads. So, But this is apparently the way to go with tapping copper. The nice thing on this setup is all I have to do for the other one is just swap it out. Well, let's try this thing out. Well, I feel like those are some pretty worthwhile upgrades. I probably won't use the extensions all the time just because it does make handling a little bit more awkward. But the rest of it, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. That's going to be something that's going to be extremely useful and make it a lot quicker getting this Jeep put back together. So if you want to see that, stick around.